All right. So. <coughs> All right. So um, yeah. This this is just an interview uh, as a forerunner to the Humanity Plus uh, conference in Hong Kong this year in December. And we have Aubrey de Grey here with us today. So Aubrey, um, would you like to give us a sentence or two about who you are? Sure. Uh, my name, as you say, is Dr. Aubrey de Grey. I'm the Chief Science Officer of a charity based in California called Sense Foundation, which was created around the work that I've done over the past decade or so. And our goal is to hasten the development of technologies, medical technologies that will succeed in applying regenerative medicine to the problems of aging. So in other words, postponing age-related ill health by repairing the various types of accumulating molecular and cellular damage that eventually lead to the debilities and diseases of old age. Uh, so you've got a talk uh, entitled um, Prospects for Dramatically Extending Healthy Life. Do you want to briefly describe what you'll be talking about underneath that banner? Well, um, the reason why we talk about dramatically extending healthy life is because if we remember that the human body is fundamentally a machine, albeit a very, very complicated machine, then we can be very confident that a procedure involving periodic repair and maintenance of that machine, in other words, an image that builds up as a side effect of its normal operation, uh, will actually postpone its decline into loss of functionality. Just as we have 50-year-old or 100-year-old cars that are doing just as well as when they were built. And in the case of the human body, we can't do that yet, of course. But the only reason we can't do it is because the human body is, as I said, a lot more complicated and therefore we have a bit more work to do to actually develop the therapies that will be sufficiently comprehensive to actually deliver that outcome. So, um, why do you think uh, that this is uh, an important topic for people to know about? Well, I think it's pretty obvious why it's important to deal with the disabilities and diseases of old age. I mean, let's face it, within the industrialized world, 90% of all deaths are caused by things that simply very, very rarely kill young adults. In other words, they ultimately are aspects of aging that kill people. And of course, in general, they kill people after uh, an extended period of significant disability and disease and suffering and so on. So it's really very obvious indeed that aging is humanity's number one problem. And the really amazing thing is not so much that I think this is an important problem, but that anyone could possibly dispute the fact that it's the world's most important problem. It just sort of goes without saying, in my view. So, what sort of things are you working on at the moment in SENS? Well, the essence of how I got to the point of being able to propound this approach to combating aging was that about 11 years ago now, I realized that we knew enough about aging to be able to describe a regenerative medicine approach, a repair and maintenance approach, in a reasonably concise manner. Essentially what we do is we describe it in terms of classification of these various types of molecular and cellular damage that I've been talking about into just seven major categories. And within each category, the, I mean each of these categories is big, they contain a lot of examples, but within each category, more or less the same type of treatment is likely to work to actually not just slow down but reverse the abundance of that particular type of damage. So we're interested in addressing all seven of those things and some of them are being addressed very capably by other people, or at least certain examples of them are. But in many cases, there's very, very little, far too little going on around the world to actually make progress against these things, because the importance of doing so is simply not adequately understood. So that means that we come in in order to make a difference, in order to hasten the development of these neglected areas, of, of which, as I say, there are quite a few, and um, thereby hasten the overall arrival of sufficiently comprehensive repair and maintenance to actually deliver extended healthy lifespan. So what do you think are the most exciting recent developments in longevity 
Well, that's an interesting question. Um, the fact that this is a divide and conquer approach, in other words, that we have divided the problem into these seven sub-problems, means that there's really there's important progress going on all the time. It's 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 more or less you know every week some important development happens that constitutes a step forward, a significant step forward in one or another of these things. However, again, because it's a divide and conquer approach, that progress is generally not manifest as a longevity result, as you know mice being announced as living longer than mice have lived before or anything like that. Uh, because, of course, it's done in isolation without corresponding developments in the other various types of damage. So, there's lots and lots of things going on, but you don't want to just be looking for progress that is reported as progress against aging. You want to be looking for things that are progress against the various types of damage that we have enumerated. So, putting your crystal ball on, what are the current views on how you think the future of longevity will pan out? Well, I'm absolutely certain that it's only a matter of time before we develop sufficiently comprehensive regenerative medicine against aging so that we can genuinely reach what I've been calling longevity escape velocity. In other words, the point where we are postponing aging faster than time is passing and we remove any inherent limit on how long people can stay in a healthy state and therefore on how long they can live. But, of course, the phrase, only a matter of time, is a very weak phrase, in a sense, because I'm not really saying how long. And I, I think it is important to give my best guess about how long. Uh, my best guess is that I think we have a 50-50 chance of getting there within about 25 years from now. Now, I do want to emphasize how speculative that is. A good way of doing so would be to tell you that I think there's at least a 10% chance that we won't get there in 100 years if we happen to encounter, you know, a bunch of unforeseen difficulties that get in our way and slow us down. But I don't really think that matters very much because to me, you know, a 50% chance is quite enough to be worth fighting for. Exactly. <laughs>